not telling you he's going to give you a life of ease. I'm not telling you you ain't going to suffer. I'm not telling you you ain't going to get hungry. I'm not telling you you ain't going to be able to pay a bill. But in all of that, right. you can rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We have the evidence of it. We talked. Was it last week we talked about the witness that we had? Look in Hebrews chapter 11 at the stuff they went through, and yet they rejoiced in the Lord. Amen. He said, All then the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. What he's saying is, I ain't got nothing. I can't afford anything. Prices are too high. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. When we do that, this next verse happens. The Lord God is my strength. Amen. He becomes our strength. Why are we so weak? Uh, because our focus is in not in the right place. Uh, why do the, the troubles and the trials and, and the things we go through uh, bring us down so easy? Because we're not rejoicing in our salvation. Uh, again, our focus is on my joy is in my home. My joy is in my job. My joy is in my bank account. My joy is in my car. That's how the church thinks. Uh, but when our, the salvation of the Lord becomes our joy, then He becomes our strength. And when He becomes our strength, there is nothing that we cannot overcome. There is nothing uh, that can bring us down. There is nothing that can defeat us. There is nothing uh, that can uh, stop us. If that is where we are, he said, uh, when that is where we are and the Lord is our strength, he will make our feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon high places. Uh, when my, my joy is in my salvation, then God becomes my strength. And he becomes such a strength that no matter what is going on, I walk above it. I, I walk in those high places. My feet become like hinds feet. Uh, what's that? You ever watch a deer boing, boing, boing out across the field? Spiritually speaking, that's how we can be. Uh, regardless of the troubles and the trial, regardless of, of what's happening in the world, regardless of how far down our nation goes, uh, we can still be like that deer. Boing, boing, boing across the high places. That can be us. That's what the church ought to be. That's what the church is called to be. But the church will never be that till the individuals in the church are that. That's, right. That's where it starts. Look, I know you got problems. I know you got troubles. I know you got trials. I know you're going to have a lot more. I know it's going to get a whole lot worse. But you have a God who is able. Amen. Amen. Here's the question. Are you going to trust God or are you going to trust yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you going to let God be God or are you going to try to be God? Are you going to base your joy on how you're living materially? Or are you going to base your joy on what God has done for you? What God will do for you? What God is doing for you? What God has prepared for you? If we can be like this. If our prayer can be, oh, Lord, this is a scary time. I know it's a scary time. It's a troublesome time. And more troubles are coming. I know that. But Lord, in the midst of this, pray like Habakkuk prayed. Revive your work. And if that's sincere, and that's truly what we're seeking, and we follow uh, what the prophet here is saying, It'll happen regardless of how bad it gets in this world, regardless of how bad it gets in this country, regardless of prices and shortages and this and that and everything else. If we rejoice in the Lord, not in what the Lord gives you, That's right. not in what he can help you to attain, but rejoice in the Lord. Amen. If we do that, then we can become like that hind. 
walk on the high places and, and rejoice in the Lord. As I said, we can have revival. Amen. We can. Mm -hmm. In the midst of the worst uh, that the, the world, the flesh, and the devil can throw at us in the midst of the worst of it, we can have revival. Amen. And do you not think God wants you to have revival? He does. He wants his people strong, spirit-filled, shining as a light in a dark world. Amen. He wants his people there. And he's told us how to get there. All we got to do is do what he told us to do. That's right. We have an amazing opportunity. We have an opportunity like nobody has had since the early church. You know, they lived in a world of turmoil. They lived in a world of persecution. They lived in a world of trouble and trial. Uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of things they had to go through. Uh, we here in this country have had it comfortable, have had it easy. God has blessed us. Uh, we lived high on the hog, so to speak. But things are changing and we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to be that light in the dark world. We have that opportunity to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We have that opportunity to stand when everything else around us crumbles. We have the opportunity to stand. Amen. That's exciting. You could have been born in 1627. You could have been born in 1776. You could have been born in 1863. Huh. God put you here for such a time as this. Amen. You're not here by mistake. You're not here by chance. You're not here by happenstance. God has a plan. Amen. From the very beginning mm -hmm. up until he calls us home and says this is over. He's had a plan. And every piece of that plan is in the place that it's supposed to be. Whether you realize it, whether you understand it, whether you uh, think about it or not, you're a part of that plan. That's right. You're exactly where God wants you to be. That's right. At the time, he wants you to be there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? It may not excite you, but I'm just standing here thinking about it and getting goosebumps that it's all going to cut loose. It's all going to break loose. Mm -hmm. And God said, I'm going to put you right in the middle of it. Now do me something. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It is. I, I think I mentioned this here before. Maybe like I say, I don't know. It runs together in my mind, but it doesn't matter. A lot, of, a lot of Christians say, oh, I would have loved to live in Bible times. We live in Bible times. Amen. 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 We're living in the fulfillment of the Bible. I'm not saying it's going to wrap up tomorrow or next month or next week, but it is very evident yes. that we're on the path and the pace is quickening. And to be here at such a time as this, we should count it an honor and a privilege that God would allow us to serve him in these times. Amen. Not go around mumbling and grumbling and complaining about how bad we got it. Go around thanking the Lord that he had enough trust and faith and confidence in you to put you here. Everybody knows Job. Look at the confidence God had in Job to allow the devil to come and do what the devil did. Look at the confidence God must have in you to put you here and now in a world that's fallen apart. In a world that, that's topsy-turvy and haphazard and, and overrun with evil. We need to show God we're worthy of his trust in us, of his confidence in us. We need to get, I, I don't know how 
us to put this. We need to get pumped up. And by, when I say pumped up, I don't mean we have to run and shout and do flips. We need to get pumped up in God. Amen. We need to get our spirit pumped up in God. We need to eat, breathe, sleep God. More so now than, than ever in our lifetimes. And even more as we go further in time. We're going to need that. There's a couple places, Paul said that, and Peter both says it. Not exactly like this, but what they're telling us is that we need to stir ourselves up. Quit wallowing in everything else and stir ourselves up in Christ. Uh, listen, I want to read this one more time. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, where gas goes to seven bucks a gallon, Neither shall fruit be in the vine. The stuff ain't on the shelves when I go to the store. The labor of the olive shall fail. They're not producing the, like the stuff like they used to produce. And the field shall yield no meat. I'm going to tell you something. With this going over in Ukraine, do you know how big a percentage of wheat comes from that area? So you can just kind of imagine where the prices are going to go for bread and stuff like that. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Might as well be cut off if you look at meat prices. <laughs> and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, or even so, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And when I do that, the Lord will become my strength. And if God is my strength, nothing can right. stop me. Amen. Nothing can bring me down. Right. Nothing right. can defeat me as long as he is my strength. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when that's true, he'll make my feet like hinds feet. And I'll walk those high places. I'll walk above the problem, the trouble, the trial. Uh, the situation, the circumstance, whether it be in my personal life or whether it be what's going on in the nation or whether it be what's going on in the world. And when we all get to that place and when we as the church get to that place, we can make a difference in people's lives. Amen. We can touch people for Christ. We can win people for Christ. Not only that, we can be a witness of the goodness and the love and, and, and mercy and concern of God. We can bring glory and honor to his name. Do you realize you can bring glory and honor and praise to him just by how you present yourself? Mm -hmm. How you carry yourself in this world? How you react to things? Uh, what you do? That can bring glory and honor and praise to God. But the opposite is also true. How you act can bring reproach on his name. Right. And unfortunately, that's what's happening a lot in the church world. We're bringing reproach on Christ. Let's not do that anymore. That's right. Let's be uh, like what Habakkuk is talking about here. Let's rise up. Let's seek to be revived. You know, it's not some mysterious formula that brings revival. It's a contrite, a broken, and a repentant heart. That's right. It's a heart that seeks after the Lord. Amen. It's a heart that puts their trust and their confidence in God. Amen. It's one who understands the things of this world don't bring joy. They might bring happiness, but there's a difference. Amen. Yeah. It is the Lord and the Lord only and what he has done in my life Amen. that brings joy. And when we can understand that and rejoice in that, then things begin to change within us. And things begin to happen within us. Amen. That's it. That's what God has given me.